Sleep. Young, Trey, Trey, A, 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 come through fresh every day. Yes. What's good, y'all? Trey Fire Hashish, back with another episode. This one, I'm gonna call this one the future of music because I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about the music industry because I've been reading a lot of articles that has me like, I have no clue where the music industry is headed. I'm glad I didn't. Honestly, I love music. I love music. I'm obsessed with it and everything, but I'm just glad I really didn't pursue it as an artist and like, oh, my life depends on this. You know what I'm saying? Because the things that I'm reading, <sighs> anywho, I want to talk about the music industry and I want to talk about future because this man dropped three albums in one year. That needs to be acknowledged. And they all went number one. And the last one, was all solo songs. There was no features, but <clears throat> we gonna get to all that. Hope y'all doing good out there. Man, let's jump into this music industry thing. So there was three articles in particular that really have me just, just thinking about the music industry in a different way. So one, the first one I saw was Lucian Grange who, so basically the music industry is set up as three major corporations. You got Universal, you got Warner, and then you got Atlantic. And there's, they have basically like a, a oligarchy on the music industry. Basically every other label still has to meet with those three. I hope I said that right. But Lucien Grange is the CEO and chairman of Universal. There was an article that came out that he announced his son, the CEO and chairman of Atlantic. That's two of the major powerhouses right there from the same family. That's crazy, bro. That's like literally having like a monopoly on the music industry right there. That's crazy. I just, I can't get over that. That's like really strong arming the music industry. Like Lucy and Grange, he was already powerful within himself. But then he just named his son the chairman of another. Like, that's really crazy. The, Second, Universal and Meta, Meta that runs Facebook and Instagram, reached a deal. A music label and a tech powerhouse, music powerhouse and tech powerhouse made a deal, basically. That's really crazy because that we were already heading towards streaming as music consumers. You know what I'm saying? So basically that affected how artists made music. Artists made playlist songs. We're getting two minute songs. We're getting 20 song albums and stuff like that with two minute songs on it. <clears throat> 45 minute projects, but it's 23 songs and stuff like that because they're just trying to make as many attempts to get on playlists now because of streaming. So now music saw that and they're like, nah, let's really get the tech behind it. And one thing that I saw, they were changing the terminology of what a stream calculates and all of that type of stuff. They were saying a stream doesn't generate the money. The accounts reached by the song now that play the song or something like that. Don't quote me, but so by Universal and Meta reaching a deal, it's basically putting music and tech right hand in hand. They're going to be able to manipulate streams, data, all types of things for the artists. Like they're basically going to tell the artist, oh, you ain't even make enough off your streams. You have to go do this. Like they're going to be able to manipulate so much more with this deal. So that, and then the third thing that really made me want to make this video was Kevin Lyle stepped down and I think he was with Warner he stepped down as um CEO 
So it's like from the up the third powerhouse, you can only imagine what he was probably going through just with the father and son duo at the other two powerhouses. Him by himself, it's like, and for him to step down from what I heard about Kevin Lyle, he actually cares about music. Lucian Grange and his son, they seem like they just are, you know, money hungry in all honesty. Like they know music or whatever, but they don't know the culture. They don't really know music. They they don't have music backgrounds at all. You know what I'm saying? They're just business people. And Kevin Lyle cared about the culture and stuff like that. So yeah, I just don't know where music is headed and I don't know how like new artists, I feel like we're going to see a lot more transactional stuff like McDonald's deals and Dunkin' Donuts, like every artist, new artist that comes up is going to be like that now because <laughs> who knows what the music industry is going to look like if the tech industry is just in, in it now. It's not even about music. It's about tech and numbers. It's not going to be about music ever. It's going to be about, oh, we can push the button on this person and we can say go on them and, oh, we like Oh, they say kill their brother. Oh, yeah, let's put him out there and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be real interesting. The artists and the people we get from major labels in these coming years. I'm just interested to see what type of things happen. You know, um, really the new artists that come up, like we might get some like real crazy, like Sexy Red is bad enough, but we might get some real crazy people. And that's, we're going to be like, dang, that's what they think of us. They think we're gonna like that. And then we're gonna see the fake numbers and all this and people are gonna buy into it because a pre-selection of, uh, you know what I'm saying, sheep mentality. Like people, they run to things that have already been reviewed and seen a million times by other people. They're like, oh, I, I gotta see what other people saw. It's, it's human, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But music industry about to be crazy. Um man but on a uh, high note a good note you know what I'm saying my man Future dropped three albums this year and what, what we got we don't trust you we still don't trust you and mixtape Pluto I like all three I'm not gonna lie and my favorite one is definitely the first one we don't trust you because it was probably like I think there was, what, 17 songs on that one. Then it was like 25 on the We Still Don't Trust You because it was the 18 and then the extra seven. And then Mixtape Pluto had 18. So what's that, like 43 songs all together. In one year, that's really crazy. And it, they was all good for real. Um, on we Don't Trust You, my favorites are, I mean, of course, like that, Cinderella. Travis Scott, he just, that feature was crazy on that joint. Like, that's the type of stuff I like to hear Travis Scott on. Like, that real lo-fi, and then he, like, using his voice perfectly and stuff. Like, that joint was tough. Everybody sounded tough on that. Um, shoot. That, album, that whole album was good, for real. Everyday Hustle with Rick Ross on it. Yeah, that joint was crazy. The second one, it was more like a singy vibe. You know what I'm saying? He was dropping the the Luther, the future, uh, what do you call it? Future Vandross on y'all. He was singing like shit. But I like Jealous. Of course, Bad Bitches. I love, love, love Bad Bitches. That's my shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, the one with Lil Baby on it, All My Life. He said, All My Life I Grew Up. I was like, word. Me too. I grew up all my life as well. <laughs> I felt that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Then the third one, Mixtape Pluto. I don't know how people are not talking about Brazier. Brazier is the best song on there by far. Like, that joint is like, it's too early, but it's like a top 10 future song to me. That joint is up there. But everybody just skipped over that. They're not even talking about that one. Uh, Lil Demon and all that. They love that. Pluto Ski with the Lil. Eh, eh, eh. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? That joint cool, but Brazier is my favorite on that joint. I like a few other ones on there. The ones I named. And uh, I need more time with that one. Because it's probably only been out like a month or so. Maybe even a few weeks. So 
I still need some more time with that joint, but I do like it. And um, I just think that's some crazy shit. Like in the midst of the beef and all of that, Future still had a crazy year. Three albums that all hit. And low key, he instigated the beef with like that. Cause that joint was on his album. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he got all the numbers from that joint. He was like, <laughs> Mans was over there like, yes. Yes, it worked perfectly, head ass boy. But he ran that up, and yeah, that joint. Tough. In the midst of all of that drama, he still had a tough little low key year, dropped his albums, got out of there, ran up the numbers. All of them went number one, I believe. So that's what's up. And yeah, but that's really all I can say about Future. That joint, I'm, I'm fucking with it. They all, I, people be just hating on online and stuff. So it's real important to enjoy things that you enjoy because you like it. Fuck with they talking, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, the future of the music industry is about to be crazy. We gonna see. And I don't even wanna talk about, you know who, man, he all over the news. I hope he get a public case and we get to just see everything right out in the open and what is facts and everything. He needs like a public case. I don't want no swept under the rug shit. We need to see everything on TV. Let's go. But <laughs> I'm gonna get on out of here. Y'all be easy, be safe out there. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.